In this video, we're going to be diving deeper into curves for plasticity. We're going to focus on lofting, patching, and x narps. I'll show you the differences between them, when to use one over the other, and also troubleshooting. So, common problems you're going to be running into when you're running these and how to solve them. Now, if you're after this video, still don't know how to use these things, you're fired. Well, let's go. So, like I said, we're going to be focusing on lofting, patching, and x narps. We're going to start with lofting. Now, this is a bit more advanced video. If you want to watch the beginner's video to curves, you know, like an introduction, I have a video on that, so go ahead and watch it. I'm going to show you on the screen. But in this one, we're going to be talking about more advanced surfacing techniques, right? So, let's start with lofting, okay? Let me just go to the top view here, and we're going to create two curves, right, like that. And I'm going to mirror it across. The easiest way to connect these two with a sheet is by lofting. So lofting is an operation that will connect either two or more edges selected in a sequence or curves and it will draw a sheet between them. Okay, so watch this. If I select this one, right, so press 2, select that, shift, select this one, press L, it will connect them with the surface. And that's the most basic connection, right, you can have. Now, the cool thing about lofting is that what you can do, you can have more of these. So if I'm going to duplicate this curve somewhere here, right, and select these in a sequence, so 1, 2, and 3, we're going to loft in this fashion. Now, you need to be careful with lofting in what order you're selecting your edges, because if I select them in this order, right, the lofting is going to work completely differently, you see, because it kind of follows the order of selection, so you need to remember that. Now, an interesting thing about lofting is that if I'm going to, for example, split this edge into two, so I'm going to grab a split tool and split it, and then select the edge and press Alt-J to explode it. Now you see you have three curves, so I have a one here, two, and three. Even though they connect it together, they're kind of touching, right? They tangent. Uh, even if I select these two and this one, it will not work. And I'll tell you why. Because a lofting tries to loft these two together first and then loft over and it just gets confused. If I started to loft from the other side like this, we're going to have a different result. But you see, that's exactly what happens. It lofts from here to here and then to the last edge. So this is why it's not working. However, if you have this um, the same situation with edges, it actually works. So watch this. If I'm going to have a cube here like this and press 3 and remove this one, right? And remove this uh, face here. And I'm going to divide this edge here. So I'm going to subdivide it, right? Like that. Now I've got one, right? i got one, two, three edges. So watch. Select these two and this one, press L and it's working. And in fact, now I can choose the tangency because we actually have a continuity of this edge going down. So we can select G1, G2, or G0. So you can select the G0, which is basically flat connection. Then you have tangency, and then you have tangency with a bit more uh, curvy connection, some more smooth connection between these surfaces, right? Now, in addition to that, what you can do when you're lofting or patching or exnarbing, right? You can create guide, uh, sort of guidelines or guide edges that's gonna guide the the curvature of your loft. So watch, if I'm going to select this curve here and connect these two with a curve, right, like that, okay. And now I'm gonna loft between these two. So select this one, then select this. Uh, let me just combine these edges, pressing J. There we go. Select that, shift select that, and press L. Now I can influence this surface, right, by selecting guides. You see that here? It's kind of flushing. Selecting guides, hold shift, and boom. And you can select, you know, a guide on this side. Also, you can select a guide on the other side. No problem, right? And obviously, we still cannot choose a tangency here because none of these edges has any surfaces, you know, um, kind of coming out of them. But what if, for example, I deleted this, right? So I'm going to delete that. And I'm going to select this edge here, and I'm going to extrude it, right? I'm going to press F, and I'm going to extrude it freestyle on this angle. So we're going to have like a face going on in here. And I'm going to actually delete this uh, curve here, because I don't need this curve, because I'm going to be using the edge to loft. So what we're going to do now is we're going to bridge them. So let's go from here all the way to here. And we're going to select G0 on this side, okay? So here it's going to be G0, right? And here's going to be G1 on this side, okay? So there you go. And then we want to slide this edge all the way to the top. So let me see that. And there we go. And now we have a tangent connection here, right? And tangent connection here. Now the really important thing 
that you need to understand is that you need to have these edges connected. So if this influencing edge is disconnected from one of these um, areas, right, there's a tiny gap between these two, it will not work. It will work when you're using x -tarps, but not in here. So now watch, if I'm going to select these two and press L, so see now I can select the tangency here, a G spot as I like to call it, from you know between G0, G1 and G2 because I actually have a continuity and since now this one is actually following the tangency here, I can use it as an influence, right? And then I can select here between G, G, you know, G0, G1 and G2, okay? And there you go and right click to approve. Now, after you loft something, you need to connect surfaces to your mesh. So you can see that now I have two separate sheets, right? So in order to create a one sheet, I need to select them both and press J. That's quite important when you're going to be, for example, using this edge, right? So let me just delete these curves here. When you're going to be using this edge as a, a base for lofting between two surfaces, right? So if I grab this piece, right, and move it, uh, Shift D and move it on Y axis somewhere here, and I want it to loft between these four edges, right, like that, I can do that. And you see now I can select the tangency because um, I have a face running behind these edges. So I can go between you know, G0, G1, or G2. Now occasionally, when the curvature is too aggressive, right, too aggressive, you may not be able to select G1 or G2 because simply the curvature is too bent in order for a, click, for a clean connection to be executed, right? So for instance, if I you know remove this one and, and let me just grab this mesh here and I'm gonna, I don't know, do something crazy like this, right? And maybe move it up or something, there we go. So now let's create a connection between these and you see it doesn't work. G1 doesn't work, G2 doesn't work, but G0 works. But when you use tab, you're changing both of them. Now we know that G1 and G2 will not work in here, but we can easily switch this manually here to G1 or G2 because we know this connection is feasible. This connection is where the problem is, right? So remember that the tab is going to change it globally, but then you can use your mouse to adjust these manually uh, whenever you need. So for example, you have a chamfer on one side and a bevel on the other. See what I mean? So remember that. Now let's talk about patching. Patching is basically closing holes, okay? So what you want to do is you want to have a loop selected, whether it's edges and curves, or just curves, or just edges, it doesn't matter. You need to have a loop. So watch, if I'm going to nuke this one, right, and I'm going to select this edge, this edge, and this edge, and this one's going to be unselected, if I use patch, it will not work. I need to have selected all edges, you know, the whole loop around the selection in order for the patch to work. Now, if you have a closed loop, you can use Alt and click Alt on one of the edges. It's going to select the loop around your mesh. But occasionally, it may not work, especially when your mesh is open. So you may have to select all the edges. Now, what you need to be very careful of, right, is when you have a tiny gap somewhere and this gap wasn't selected. So, for example, if I had a tiny gap in here, so I'm going to split this edge here in the corner like that. And you see I'm going to have a tiny edge in here this one, right? If I'm not going to select that, so I'm going to select everything and I'm going to control deselect that, patch will not work. It will not work because you need this edge to be selected to close the loop, right? So that's really important. Now in terms of G-spot, as I like to call it, like I said, you need to uh, make sure that, you know, the connection is feasible. So let's say, you know, let's say that this edge here was curved. So I'm going to curve it like this, okay? I'm going to imprint it, right? And by the way, if you're wondering what's this, it's a radial menu. You can go ahead to Plasticity website and, you know, get it installed. It's really cool. It's kind of like a pie menu in Blender. If I'm going to select all these using, the, you know, including this one, if I'm going to patch it, it will work. It will simply curve the mesh in here. Do you see what I mean? Patching also works with the guidelines. You can see here I can, I can, you know, create a guideline. So if I'm going to, for example, run a curve here like this, right? Okay. So now let's select all these edges with a uh, with Alt to select the loop, and I'm gonna click on Patch, and Shift click this loop, and it will not work. And it doesn't work because simply the computation is you know too difficult for uh, for the uh, patch to work. But XNARPS can do it. 
So watch this, if I press F now for X now, so I'm going to select this face, then select this guide, this will work. So x snaps can do stuff that patch or lofting can't do, especially patching, right? Because x snaps is way more forgiving. It's just the algorithm is way more powerful than this. So now patching is actually fantastic when you work on, um, you know, meshes that need closing, right? So let's say that, so let's create something very simple, okay? Something like this, and I'm going to bring it in here, okay? And I'm going to mirror it to this side, and I'm going to create something similar on the bottom, like this, okay? Maybe a little bit lo uh, no, longer here, and I'm gonna move it to, and I'm going to move it to this side, okay, and mirror this, and then I'm gonna loft them right together. So I'm just gonna loft them. So I'm gonna loft them uh, like that, okay. So loft them. Then we're gonna remove these two curves, and I'm gonna simply loft these two with G0. So press L and G0, right, and, and I'm gonna connect all these faces with J, and I can remove these curves and now. You see that we have a sheet, this is not closed, right, it's open. So we can use patch command to patch it. So select that one and patch it. And now we see now we have a solid, so we patch this face and it patched this face. However, if you have like a, you know, wonky connection, something like this, for example, I'm gonna cut this out and remove this, okay. So we have something like that, you know, it will not work. It's just gonna display an error, okay. So what you wanna do is manually close each of these so I could try patching that it's actually worked that's impressive um, I didn't think it's gonna actually patch it but um, you know you, you don't do it this way and it will work okay normally what I do I usually clean up the connection and you know try to patch it again right so whenever you have a closed loop of edges or curves or combination of both you can use patch command when you have two edges two curves or two sets of edges you can use the lofting and you also you can influence the surface right now x nerves are on a different fucking level because this shit doesn't even require guidelines to be connected to curves or edges so if i for example had this cube right and we had let's say a you know a hole here like actually let's let's make this a bit more interesting let's uh let's remove these so shift x let's grab this plane and we're going to curve it so shift s and we're going to curve it so press one and this by the way the tool is called raise degree we're gonna curve it like that okay and let me just select these two and drop them down a bit like that to make it more interesting All right and bring these down there we go it's got like a sub d mesh and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a cut in here, okay? So I'm going to create a cut like this, right? I'm going to press 1, 4, and let me just remove these, toggle these points here. So 1, and I'm going to toggle the points because I don't want to see them. So I want to see only points on these curves here. Let's create a beveled surface and see and cut it, okay? So we can remove this and nuke this one. So if I wanted to create a cockpit here or some kind of a canopy, right? I don't even have to connect these um, for the examples to work. I can simply create a basic, you know, sort of a outline of the surface, how I want to influence this, you know, something like this. And as long as it makes sense in terms of curvature, it will work. So if I do something like this and, you know, grab this one and move it like this, this should work. Okay, so watch. I'll select this one, press F, go to X snaps. And now you can select the guide, so I click that and boom, right? It doesn't have to be connected. Patching would not work this way, so if I patch this and try to select that, bollocks, nothing happens. Lofting would, will not work here because lofting needs, you know, two sets of edges or more uh, in order to work. It, it will not work on the loop, but x snaps is where shit gets interesting, right? So again, x snaps, shift click here, you're done. It's really quick. So now let's define the surface that we want to enclose, which is going to be these, right? So let's go here and press X nerves. And then we're going to choose the influencing edges like that. And, and, you know, and you're done. This would not work with patch. This is way too complicated for a patch. So this is how fast you can work with X nerves, which is fucking insane. Now let's talk about troubleshooting, okay? Now I have a tutorial, a gun tutorial that's showing the full workflow so go ahead and watch it because we run into a lot of troubles over there but i just want to show you you know what would work here what wouldn't work okay so if i for example went ahead and patched this this whole thing it's tempting yeah but it, it will not work 
you see you're gonna get this really shitty shading here collapsing basically right so this doesn't really work and uh, you know that's not what i want so you need to kind of split it into parts right so what we're gonna do is we're going to create an edge here with control and you want to usually split these when the bevel breaks so when the bevel ends and there's a you know tangent connection and a flat face and the bevel starts that's when you want to draw these edges and sort of uh, create connections and you want to connect them with a the bridge tool okay so run here and go with a bridge tool and bridge tool will bridge them uh, together now what we can do is we can choose different types of connections for example we can choose g0 right on both or we could choose g1 in here right uh, not on this one on this one yeah so g g1 in here and maybe reduce the tangency i mean the the, the tension to like 0 0.7 and then we can do the same thing in here right so shift q and bridge and then we can have a connection here so g1 on this side and g0 in here and we're going to drop this to 0 0.7 as well there you go and then we're going to connect these so we're going to patch them okay we're going to use a patch command here right so let's patch it okay good and remember this is g1 in here and g0 in here okay so apply this and now when you're patching something the mesh is going to be connected so you don't have to connect it like for lofting and you don't have to do for lofting or external it's actually part of becomes part of the mesh it's been patched now we're going to remove this uh, curve here and this one because we're going to be using these edges for tangency okay so i'm going to show you the power of like, x tops again okay i'm going to try to patch this right so let's patch this right and we need g1 here because we need continuity g1 here and g1 here right and you see that this lump here this one if i'm going to go to if i'm going to approve this and go to my you see that look at this it looks like garbage right this lump here but watch what happens when i'm going to use x tops yeah i'm going to alt click here go to f and use x tops and I'm going to G1 here, G1 here, and G1 here. And look how clean this looks. See, the connection is clean. Right? That looks really clean. So, patch didn't work, but X snaps work. It's simply a better algorithm, okay? Same here. Like, for example, I don't think patch is going to work that well. So, I need G1 in here, I need G1, right? And G1, and G1, and G0 in here. That actually worked. Although, you see here, we got a little bit of a wobble. So, let's see if we're going to be a little bit better with X snaps, right? So let's go with X narps. And G1, 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 and G1. And let's see that. Let's apply this. And it's a little bit cleaner. It's a little bit cleaner. Now here, technically, we could close this with a patch, but we're going to have a bit of a wobble in this area. The reason being because the mesh simply collapses in here. So if you really wanted to do a good job, you may want to run an edge here like this and bridge them first, right? Okay. And you want to go with uh, G1 on this side and G0 in here. And then we're going to select this one, this one, this one, and this one. And we're going to... I can actually patch this. I think it's going to be fine. G1 and G1, right? And then we can remove this curve and patch this one and it should be fine. G1, G1, and G1, right? And that looks you know, really clean, okay? So this is how you do it. And that's why I think you guys should get the studio version if you can, because honestly, it's just uh, incredible what XNAPS can do. And it's much faster to work with XNAPS, you know, uh, patching and lofting. It will get you 90% of stuff you need to do. And probably I'll be able to solve this problem here as well. As well. I would need to simply just you know split it into more pieces. But it would just take me more time, and time is something that you cannot buy. So, you know... Xnumps plugin is like four hundred dollars for Rhino, and here you're getting it for two ninety nine with plasticity, which is a fucking steal. So for me, if you have money, it's just fucking no brain, no brainer. You should get it. So anyway, this this is it. You know, if you have any questions, drop them in in the chat. Um, if I can help or help, uh, or just ask on our Discord, a link in the video description. So anyway, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.